We never get tired of hearing that old, old story about how the Savior came from glory to save a wretch like me. And we do have victory in Jesus. And we know that throughout this that we're dealing with in our state, in our community, state, and country, that we will have victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. We welcome you this morning. Thank you for joining us either by live stream or by Facebook Live. Uh, we wish you were here, but I know you understand why we cannot be here together. And we want to do what has asked, been asked of us to do, and we will continue to do that until we have been given the green light where we can all be together again to worship. Worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. But we're glad you're here today. Thank you for joining us, joining us even if it is electronically or technologically. We're going to begin today with a great hymn, one that speaks to us in many ways. Great is thy faithfulness. means so much to us during this time. So you join as we sing together. Together as our worship team leads us. Oh 
so beautifully what a powerful what an awesome song with a great message and we are so thankful that you have come to worship with us today via live stream or Facebook live and, and we pray that even where you are you might feel the Holy Spirit as we certainly feel him in this place and we pray that you would continue to worship with us through live stream and through videos and and through modern technology that we are reaching so many people with the good news of Jesus Christ. But we pray that you and your family are doing well, that you're staying healthy. And again, echo what Bill said, we're trying to do our best to comply with what the authorities are asking, that we might be faithful to care give for you, that we would protect you in any way, shape, or form from being in harm's way with this virus but every week we have a beautiful time where we can come to the altar and we can pray again your altar today might be on your couch in your family room it may be in your bedroom it may be in your living room it, it may be on your cell phone it might be on your laptop computer it might be on your smart tv wherever you are it can be an altar of worship and prayer and we know that this is a time where we need to pray like never before. I was speaking to one of our worship team members just before the service. The only thing in my lifetime that I remember coming close to this time that we're experiencing is 9-11. When people were buying Bibles and people were coming to worship, the difference is we're not allowed to be in God's house as a large group but we are worshiping, but I pray this would be a time that we would draw closer to Jesus Christ than we've ever been. Or if you have never met him as your Lord and Savior, that even now you might experience his goodness and grace. But right now, would you join me as we go to the Lord in prayer? Oh God, we bow humbly before you, trusting that you will lift us up and God, we have been brought to our knees by this virus and our world has been shaken. And Father, I pray that this would be a time of, of growing in our relationship with you. This would be a time of growing in our relationships with our families and loved ones. God, we know how hectic life can become and how fast paced life gets. But now it's come to a, a halt and we are being made to do things differently. It's a new normal. But I pray, God, that during this time, as you said in Psalm 4610, that we would be still and know that you are God. And we know that you are sovereign and we know that you are still on the throne 
And we know, oh God, that you are still in control even though things seem out of control. And Father, we pray for all those families that have been affected by the coronavirus. We pray for healing and those that are still battling it. We pray, God, for a heads of protection. A be, a, a be around those who are trying to stay healthy and stay safe. And Father, we continue to pray for our leaders, for our president and vice president, for our governor and for their task force. And Father, we pray that you again would just bring healing to our land. And Lord, we pray for all the doctors and nurses and medical professionals again who are on the front lines and pray for their safety and for their families. Lord, we just pray that during this time we would allow you to examine our hearts and our minds. And Lord, if there would be anything inside of us that we need to confess, that we need to make right, may we do it even now. May we get our house in order now. Father, may we give our lives fully surrendered to Jesus Christ now. May we tell someone we love you now. May we ask someone to forgive us now. May we tell someone I forgive you now. May we share our faith now. Oh God, we just pray that again, maybe what Satan intended for evil, you will use it in a good way, in a mighty way, to bring great revival and spiritual awakening that would sweep again across our land and across the world. So Father, help us. Help us to keep in step with your Spirit. May we not run ahead of you, nor lag behind you, or get out of step with you, but we would keep in perfect step with your Spirit. And Father, I'm just thankful for this church family and for all those who are viewing right now, and I ask God your blessings upon them, that anoint, a fresh anointing of your Spirit would be upon each one, wherever they might be, in this state or out of this state, wherever they are worshiping with us this morning. May they feel your presence. And we'll just give you all the praise and the glory, Father, for the victory we're trusting you to bring. I just pray now that your Holy Spirit might continue to move through this service. Play and sing through our musicians and speak through the power of your word and your servant. And that our lives might be drawn closer to you and, and radically changed to be more like Jesus Christ. In whose strong and holy and precious name we pray. Amen. I'm so thankful again uh, that you are viewing this morning and I ask again if you have your Bible, if you would turn in your Bible to John chapter 16 and, and as you're doing that I'm grateful again for our musicians being here today. Thank you all for coming out and and trying to uh, respect social distancing and for playing ladies and for those working in the sound booth and and our camera operator and, and our computer operator, for all of you all, it's a team effort. Thank you for being here to make this worship service a reality. But there's a beautiful verse that I've grown to love through the last several years, and it's one you might be familiar with, but it's a powerful text that I hope speaks to your heart today. It's John chapter 16, verse 33. Jesus was speaking when he said, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I've overcome the world. This is the word of the Lord and blessed be the name of the Lord. Overwhelmed by the weight of your 
sin, Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. joy from the ashes a new life is born Jesus is calling oh come to the altar the Father's arms are open wide forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Christ is
the altar the father's arms are open wide forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of jesus christ what a powerful what a beautiful message and song and and I know I felt the presence of the Lord. I pray that you did as well as you were worshiping with us. Every week I do try to use a little humor and certainly during these times that we're in, we need a little bit of humor. And, uh, you know, being at home, uh, it's not all that boring uh, being at home. I, I found that it's very interesting that one bag of rice has 7,456 grains in it, and the uh, other one has 7,489 grains. So being at home is not that bad, really. It's really not that bad. <laughs> but it really wasn't that funny. But you know what? What if the grocery stores have to close uh, during this time. We'll have to hunt for our food. And I don't even know where Doritos live. I mean. <laughs> Just so you will know, there is more laughter in this empty church than there is when it is full. And that's because, I have to be honest, the last two weeks, we have used a laugh track to bring the full uh, experience of the laughter and the jokes. So thank you for, uh, for dealing with me and my lame attempt to be funny. But with all the craziness that's been going on with this coronavirus, uh, people have been looking for calmness. People have been looking for comfort. People have been looking for encouragement. The president and his staff the governor and his staff, medical professionals and doctors and their staff, ministers like us, we're all trying to bring you hope and encouragement. But you know, there's one who's greater than all of us. It's one that not only can bring comfort and bring calmness and bring encouragement, he can also save us. And his name is Jesus Christ. And it was not in a briefing room with reporters and cameras that Jesus spoke, but in an upper room with His disciples that Jesus tried to bring calmness and peace to His disciples during a very difficult and scary time. And that time was when Jesus was to go to the cross. The disciples did not understand what Jesus was telling them. Many times we do not understand what our leaders are trying to tell us, but yet they give us words of encouragement, they give us words of hope, they give us reassuring words of peace during this time. And I just pray this morning that whatever you're experiencing in your life and whatever you're going through, just as Jesus was trying to prepare His disciples for what was ahead, just as our leaders are trying to prepare us for the uncertain days of what's ahead, that we can experience again peace and comfort and calmness. And I believe that the words Jesus spoke over 2,000 years ago are as relevant today as they were then. Because when Jesus spoke in that upper room, He was giving a message of peace. He was given a message of peace. He said in verse 33 of John chapter 16, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. Now again, we look when there's press conferences, we look for our leaders to give us something to give us peace. They're, 
they're experimenting with medications that may be an antiviral medication. Maybe it worked on malaria. It's possible that it could work on the coronavirus. We have words of peace when they see maybe some cases are beginning to curve in, in some parts of the world. We, we find peace when they're giving alternative ways for people to survive during these difficult days. But what was Jesus talking about when He said, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace? Well, John chapter 14, which many of you might be familiar with, beginning with verse 1, when Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, so that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. I believe he was given encouragement saying, all you have to do is trust in me. You don't need to let your hearts be troubled. And then so saying that he's going to prepare a place for them, it would bring them peace. And then in John chapter 14, verse 16, Jesus said, and I will ask the Father to send you another advocate to help you and to be with you forever. The Spirit of Truth. Jesus was saying, I might be leaving, but there is the Holy Spirit that's going to come to comfort you and be with you, not only today, but forever. And that should bring us peace, even during our days of uncertainty and unrest. But then what else did Jesus say? He said in John chapter 15, verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. If a person remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. He was saying you have to stay in the vine. We have to stay in Christ in order for us to experience real peace. He said in John 16, 16, he said, in a little while, you will not see me. But then after a little while, you will see me. What was he talking about? He was talking about the crucifixion, his death, and then the resurrection. In a little while, you're not going to see me. We know three days later, they would see him again. He also said in John 14, verse 27, My peace I leave you. My peace I give you. But I do not give to you as the world gives. So do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. When Jesus was offering a peace, He was talking about an eternal peace that was different than the world's temporary peace. Maybe you're watching today and you've been trying to find peace through the world's ways. I want to tell you this. Money will not bring you peace. Alcohol will not bring you peace. Drugs will not bring you peace. Pornography will not bring you peace. Immorality will not bring you peace. The world and its ways will not bring you peace. The only way we experience real peace is through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And I pray that during this time that we're going through that you might find peace in Christ. But not only peace, but that you would find joy in Christ. In John chapter 15, verse 11, another way he brought peace, he said, I have spoken these things to you so that my joy might be in you and that your joy may be full or may be complete. It's important that we have joy even through our times of hardship and to look for ways to laugh with our families, to to laugh with fellow Christians and to find joy that comes from our faith in the Lord. I want to share a little funny that happened this week. Well, years ago, I shared from a sermon that when I was a, a teenager and I was in the youth group at church, we had a youth minister that shared a story 
about being out on a date with a young lady. He said she was a beautiful young lady and that he was uh, very attracted to her and said as they were out on this date, uh, they went back and uh, they began to uh, show a little bit of affection toward one another. And the next thing you know, things were starting to get a little bit too hot and heavy. And so he said he was trying to fight the temptation. He was trying to fight the urge. So he said, do you have any chips? Let's pray. And he said, it's a funny thing that when you ask for food and you ask to pray, that moment is, is ended immediately. It's quenched just like that. Uh, do you have any chips? Let's pray. Well, I shared that. Well, this week I received a video from a, a couple in our church, and I'm not going to share their name to, to protect the guilty, but I received a video from a couple in our church that's been married for many years, and it was the two of them uh, videoing themselves, and they said, Todd, this is how we're spending our uh, inside days. The husband held up, they said, a bag of chips, and we're praying. <laughs> And so that was finding some joy uh, during this very difficult time. But Jesus said, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. Not only was it a message of peace, but it was a message of problem that he was sharing with his disciples. Where did all these problems begin? Well, I think we can trace it back all the way to Genesis chapter 3. For it was in Genesis chapter 3 that God had put Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, and He said, you can eat of any fruit in this garden except for the tree that is in the middle. It is the tree of the knowledge of good and good and evil, and if you eat of it, you will surely die. We all know this story. Satan came in the form of a serpent and he tempted Adam and Eve and they gave in to their temptation and they ate that forbidden fruit. At that moment is when the relationship with God was broken and sin entered into the world. Sin entered in, sickness, pain, and ultimately death. That's where all the problem began in the Garden of Eden. But all through Scriptures, we've seen some godly people have to go through some problems and some trouble. You remember Job in the Old Testament was an upright man who feared God and he shunned evil. But yet we read about in Job chapter 3, verse 26, he said, I have no rest, no quietness, I have no peace, only turmoil. And then we see David, who is a man after God's own heart, in Psalm chapter 6, verse 3. He said, My soul is filled with anguish. How long, Lord? How long? Haven't we all been asking the same thing? How long is this virus going to last? How long are we going to have to stay at home? How long are the schools going to be closed? How long before I can go back to work? How long before I can get back to church? How long before we don't have to stand six feet apart? How long, Lord? How long? But all through Scripture, we see that even God's people were not exempt from trouble. Think about Paul, who was one of the most powerful Servants of God and all of God's Word. We see in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 and following, when Paul said, Therefore, I to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given me a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. And three times I pleaded with the Lord to remove it from me. But what did the Lord say in verse 9 of 2 Corinthians chapter 12? My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. And that should bring us encouragement today that Job, who was upright, a man who feared God and shunned evil, David, a man after God's own heart, 
a, a man like Paul who would die for the cause of Christ, yet he pleaded with the Lord to remove this thorn, but the Lord said, my grace is sufficient for you and my power is made perfect in weakness. Even Jesus Christ, when Isaiah prophesied in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 3, it said he was despised and rejected by mankind. That he was a man uh, who was uh, familiar with suffering. And we know that Jesus Christ had trouble. And he was perfect. So we know we're going to have trouble. We're going to have problems in this life in which we live. You know, I've, I've loved through the years Max Licato. Uh, Max Licato is an author, a pastor, and I saw a video this past week where Max Licato was trying to make sense, as we all are, about what we're going through. And Max Licato said, if, if we feed our faith, we will starve our fear. But if we feed our fear, then we will starve our faith. And I pray that during this time that, that we would increase our faith he went on to say, the key question is, what is God saying to us? What is God saying to us? And then he said that, you know what? We have misplaced our priorities. We have made idols out of entertainment and idols over our bank accounts. And he said, during this time of trouble, we must turn back to God. And that's exactly what we need to do. Have you thought we're not able to, to watch the sporting events or we're not able to, to go to this place or go to that place? And again, we're, we're concerned about our, our uh, bank accounts. And I mean, my wife and I ch checked my retirement yesterday. I wish I hadn't because it was unbelievable. The, the dip that it had taken during this time. But you know what? We have to place our faith and trust in God to know that He is in control even when it seems like things are out of control. He said, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, as we're experiencing, you will have trouble. Now I've saved the best for last. But take heart. I've overcome the world. And that's so comforting. You know, when, when Christ made this statement to His disciples, it was as if He had already uh, won the victory. He had already assumed that He was going to win the victory. Take heart. I've already overcome the world. And that should bring us encouragement. But take heart or be of good courage or be of good cheer. But it says that we've overcome the world through Jesus Christ. And we know what that means for us. They had to realize and we have to realize that Jesus is the captain of our salvation. He is the only one that brings true peace and purpose and meaning in our lives. I think about what Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. He said, but thanks be to God, He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And then Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2, 9, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love Him. And I want to give you encouragement today that we have victory through Jesus Christ. And you know what? Maybe during this time where you've had more time at home or more time to think or more time to think about what's important in your life. I pray that you would come to understand during this time that Jesus Christ wants to be first place. He wants to be on the throne of our hearts and lives. And maybe we've allowed other things to be placed above Him. And as a result, now we're saying, wow, what am I going to do? And and I can't go here, I can't do that, I can't get away from my family, I can't do this. And maybe during this time, God again is opening our spiritual eyes to show us what's most important, what should be most important is our relationship with Jesus Christ. 
Maybe you've drifted away from your relationship with Christ. Maybe you haven't been reading your Bible as much as you should, praying as much, or doing devotions with your family, or talking about spiritual things. This would be a perfect time. Because you know what I'm anticipating? What I'm praying? That when all this is said and done, I'm praying that churches are going to be filled to overflowing. I pray that people are going to be hungering and thirsting after the Lord and saying, I couldn't be in God's house for worship, but I can tell you it's going to be a priority right now for me and my family. We're going to come to worship together and we're going to sing praise together and we're going to pray together and we're going to share our faith boldly with the world where people need the Lord. It's a promise from God. The message Jesus was giving was one of peace and one of problems that we're going to face, but it was a promise that He has already overcome the world. That's the victory we have in Christ. I want to close by sharing this with you, and I've shared this before in, in years gone by, but I told you uh, my dad was a school principal and a minister of music. My mom taught and was a church pianist for years. They were bivocational and I had the privilege of having my dad as my school principal fourth through eighth grade. And, and this was back before they uh, consolidated and did you know one big middle school in the county. There were a lot of little county schools that were grades one through eight. And so I had the privilege of being in my dad's school. And I was uh, Camp Dick Bobcat, Camp Dick Robinson in Garrett County. I was a Camp Dick Bobcat. That was our mascot. We were the Bobcats, hear us roar. And I remember vividly that gym there with those uh, hardwood floors, these old wooden bleachers. When I played in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, we, we still had a wooden backboard with the blue square and the blue around the edges. And we didn't even have glass yet. And Man, I remembered how exciting it was when we would have a pep rally and I've shared before when there was a pep rally there was such excitement and and there was a spirit stick do y'all remember ever seeing spirit sticks it was just a piece of wood with some tassel hanging off of it and and we went nuts because whoever showed the most spirit would win the spirit stick so they would hold it in front of the sixth grade and, and they would say, we've got spirit. Yes, we do. We've got spirit. How about you? And then the seventh grade, we've got spirit. Yes, we do. We've got spirit. How about you? And then the eighth grade, we've got spirit. Yes, we do. We've got spirit. How about you? And then they would go back and put it in front of the sixth grade. V-I-C-T-O-R-Y, that's the sixth grade battle cry. And then the seventh grade, V-I-C-T-O-R-Y, that's the seventh grade battle cry. Eighth grade, V-I-C-T-O-R-Y, that's the eighth grade battle cry. And then they would try to determine, and then they would go, we've got more, we've got more, we've got, I mean, people were into it so much just to get that spirit stick to be placed in our classroom. Do you know what the spirit stick is for the Christian, for the believer? It's the cross. The cross is our victory. The cross is our spirit stick. And we all as Christians ought to be chanting V-I-C-T-O-R-Y. That's the Christian battle cry. V-I-C-T-O-R-Y. That's the Christian battle cry. V-I-C-T-O-R-Y. That's the Christian battle cry. And we have that spirit within us. And today it would be my privilege, my joy to pray with you so that you can receive victory through Jesus Christ, even now as we pray together. Oh God, thank you. Thank you for the hope we have in Jesus. Thank you, Father, that even though we are sinners, you sent Jesus to die for us. That anyone who would call upon his name would be saved. Everyone who calls upon the name of Jesus, no matter how bad we've been or how good we think we've been or how many times we've messed up, we can be forgiven. And you tell us in your word, if we confess our sins, that you are faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and 
cleanse us or purify us from all unrighteousness. Thank you for that promise, O oh God. Thank you that you so loved the world that you gave your one and only Son that whoever would believe in you should not perish but have everlasting life. Thank you for that promise. And Father, I pray that if there's someone watching today and your Holy Spirit is convicting them, I pray that they might pray to receive you and begin this journey to say, Dear God, I confess that I'm a sinner. Lord Jesus, please forgive me of my sin. I ask you to come into my heart. Thank you, God, for saving me. I love you, Jesus. Lord, if someone could pray a simple prayer much like that and begin to live a life that's holy and pleasing, repenting from the old habits and the old ways and start walking in newness of life, may this be the time. Oh Lord, maybe there are Christians who are renewing their faith and a mom and a dad are, are going to share with their children that we've not set good examples. Church has not been a priority. God has not been a priority in our home. But from here on out, God is going to take first place in this home. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Or Father, maybe there are folks that when this is all said and done and they want to be a part of this church family, I pray, God, that they might even now make a commitment to say, I want to join this family of faith and I want to be about my father's business as long as there is time, as long as I have breath to serve. But oh God, help us right now, oh God, to just give our all to you because we know you have been patient with us and now it's time for us to come to you humbly. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to have a time of commitment and again, Maybe you're going to make a commitment in your family room or you're going to share a young person with your parent that today I'm asking Jesus in my heart. Maybe you're going to share with your spouse, today I'm asking Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. Or maybe you're going to call me or one of our staff this week and say, I made a decision on Sunday and I want you to pray with me. It would be our privilege to pray with you, to talk with you about your commitment. But right now, we're going to sing this beautiful, beautiful invitation hymn, The Savior is Waiting. Won't you give your life to Christ now as we sing together?
thank you so much for worshiping with us today. Again, we pray that you have felt the presence of the Lord wherever you might be, and that you feel God's love, His mercy, and His grace. I want to echo what we've been saying all along. We are going to get through this. God is going to be glorified. We are going to experience victory through Jesus Christ. And I pray that you would keep your faith strong. And one of the ways we're going to do that is by our live stream services. Again, uh, having a video that we'll present on Wednesday nights. And for Sunday evenings, uh, later this afternoon or maybe shortly after this service, we're going to be sending out four questions, much like our Forks Table questions, if you're a part of a Forks Table group, for you and your family to discuss around the table that go along with Sunday morning sermon. So I pray sometime this afternoon or maybe sometime this evening, uh, you would go over these questions with your spouse or with your children or if you live alone, that you would take the time to ask yourself these questions to help us grow in our faith. But I've been asked to remind you of another important uh, ministry in our church, which is our tithes and offerings. We are very uh, sensitive during this time to the economic situation that we're in. But we've had several people asking, how can we continue to give during this very difficult time? There are a couple of ways. Uh, you can certainly go to our website. You can give online. And you can also give by mailing uh, your offering to the church, 495 Duckers Road, Midway, Kentucky, 40347. Uh, or if you want to come by the church, I guess there's a third way. Uh, you can maybe ring the bell and just drop it off at the door and we can take that for you. But uh, the ministries of the church are still going on. We're still trying to help people. Um, next week would have been our fifth Sunday benevolence offering. We're not gonna be able to have that. We're helping a lot of folks outside of these walls. We had people this morning who are delivering food to people that are shut in or people that are in need. We have Sunday school classes meeting uh, online and doing virtual Sunday school class. So we're still trying to meet needs and to minister to people. So however the Holy Spirit leads you, we would appreciate you prayerfully considering how you might give during this very difficult time. But again, thank you so much for being here and allowing the Spirit of God to be in this place. Uh, we're going to sing a closing song. So why don't you join us? And this will be our benediction as we sing together. Thank you.